fired it's up. It's a nice sweater. It is. I mean, it fits It fits pretty good in the front. I just don't understand why they do this in the back. You'd have to read to people if you had to bring that nah, somewhere to like the park. Classy. It is, but it still. It steps me up. Oh, that's it all does. it takes. I don't think, like, if I just wear this and I get like a nice... Nice watch, something tasteful. I guarantee you, if you went to like one of those bougie bars, maybe Williamsburg, okay. that sweater on, just hear me out. Just hang out. You just start reading some Huckleberry Finn to a girl. Yeah, I love that. That's your, that's your example of a book. <laughs> a book from high school <laughs> that you didn't read. Yeah, yeah. that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it, dude. Yeah, man. Huck well, Finn. it's a lot of the sweater, too. Yeah, yeah. Now, would you tell her it's Amazon a, Basics, or you'd say it's some new shit? Nah, it's not Amazon Basics. This is Yuku. Oh, wow. Okay. But you know about me. this. <laughs> How much do you think this sweater was? So, knowing you, 40 bucks. Nah, it was, uh, what was it? Don't tell me the sell price. What did you pay for it? Nah, I mean, what I paid for it on Amazon. What do you mean? Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's 70% off sometimes. Oh, this was Yuku Men Slim Fit Zip Up. Yeah, thirty eight ninety nine. Oh, what did I say? Free Forty shipping. bucks. Yeah, that's not bad. Forty. Who knows you? It was original price seventy bucks. Oh well, yeah. One I day knew shipping. That. I knew that original price. I just met a guy, dude. This whole original price thing. I want to ship with this guy. He's telling me about his clothes. I guess the other comic made fun of him. The comic said, and it was pretty accurate. <laughs> that's what I think bothered him the most. The comic said, uh, "Give it up for the testicle in a dress shirt," and the dude kind of did. I'll be honest with you. If you ever had to put that in a human setting, it was there was a resemblance, and uh, you know, basically, this dude kept telling us what his wardrobe was. The rest of it, he's like, you know, he may say that about me, but he goes, "You see this shirt? His whole thing was Saks Fifth Ave oh, clearance okay. section." Oh wow! Well. So you know, he was one of those. Dude, he's telling you me know where I got this. Five hundred dollars, <laughs> right? Yeah. He goes, I get it for fifty five dollars. And you're looking, it's just a black shirt that's too big for the dude. Wow. And I'm just like, what you know, what I mean it well probably was from Saks Fifth Avenue clearance. It's just like it doesn't lift, it's not good, it's not good. It's not good, it's not good. And I couldn't tell the difference. I might just keep this sweater for podcasting purposes. It does you can't, look. You can't good. really tell well, when you understand you're st- what you don't like about it. I just don't like the way it looks in the back. I'll be thinking about that all the time. Really? If I have to walk around. Ah, people see you from the back sometimes. You gotta, you know. They I see think you, that's how those things. They are, see you though. coming. They see you going. But I don't. There's no reason why though. They My could, jean they, jacket's like that. They could make the back, you know, regular looking. <laughs> they don't got to make it all like. Uh, that's the style. Tapered though. up. Nah, it would look. You're would questioning look, Yaku's design over here. I'm, I'm, what? How uh, many clothes have you designed? I'm gonna go find some more <laughs> stuff. I mean, I like the the way that Yuku works in the front. How'd you hear about Yuku? Ah, I was just clicking around. I found a nice slim fit. You got to get slim fit if you're slim. Yeah, because they make these clothes for like big fat guys or normal guys like and me. like short, yeah, like wide, stocky guys. But it's like you got to get Yuku's got to go slim fit. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Orle. They have some good jackets if you need Amazon's them. Amazon's got like thousands of these Chinese brands. They really are doing some good work. It's cheap to dress nice, I guess. I don't know. 40, I mean, you're really spending out now. You yeah, know what's 40 happening bucks next. On a sweater is not. Yeah, but dude, once you start dropping 40 on a sweater, next thing you know, you got a girl moving in with you. That's not, not a bad look. You get a nice sweater like this. I like these, these pants I'm keeping. I got these the other pants, pants are nice. Keeping. Yeah, you went with that that chocolate too, that dark chocolate, yeah, that yeah, Hershey. Yeah, something tasteful. Yeah, I don't want to get too flashy. What are you gonna switch out the Adidas shoes now? No, I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna get those exact same shoes. Really? I'm just getting them again. I've I've run those back like four times now. Nah, you gotta spice it up this summer, dude. Get some Air Jordans or something. Those are the only shoes that feel good on my feet now. But you haven't every tried other, on every other shoe I've ever tried on now feels horrible. But you ever tried on those big platform shoes that your people wear sometimes? <laughs> platform. You know the big bottoms. I know you. Said. Oh yeah, yeah. Those aren't comfortable. Those are just for like it, it looks kind of like stylish, I guess. But like every other like uh, I've only I found this one Adidas Cloud Foam sneaker. And every other shoe I've ever tried on now, it's like, this is shit. Wow. I'd feel bad about myself. Even Jordans aren't even like, it's not even comfortable. You know, it is crazy. I waste days. Like, I got lucky the other day. I found shoes quick. But, you know, a lot of times I should just find one shoe. Like, I've had some. Like, I had some New Balances I really liked. But now it's like, you got to find the number. Was that the 917? Uh, like, yeah. how'd you even refine the Adidas? I just get them on Amazon. You just re-up. 
Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. you just bought them on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I don't buy shoes on Amazon. You know what your you know what your size is. Yeah, I even if you I try could. it on in the store, you just get it on Amazon. It's gonna be cheaper. Yeah, I gotta start doing that. That's the that. thing with the yeah with New Balance though. Their they, their naming scheme is not like Jordans or Kyrie's. It's like seven sixties, nine sixty one. You'll never find seventy five fifties. Yeah. yeah. I have one pair on a video. There's a glimpse of it, and I want to find like a sneaker dude because they remember. I don't know if you remember them. They were the tan and hot pink and neon green. Uh, oh, those things were. Fr- I felt. Yeah, you, you know, you got to talk to Sam Rubinoff. Oh uh, yeah, he does. He, he knows the, the new, he knows new yeah. balances. Yeah, the thing with New Balance too is that once you get the new ones, they're not going to be. You, you got to break them in. They come all stiff. Well, you know which shoes you don't got to break in? You got, man, the Diodoras, those Italian shoes. Oh, yeah. Those are the most comfortable shoe. They start getting crazy with them now, though. You Compared to, like, this nowhere. Adidas shoe, though, I have, though. This is, like, everything I need in a shoe. I like the way it looks. Sleek. It's sleek. It, like, keeps my feet. It's light. I can run around in it. Yeah. And you like, are real hoppy in those things. I'm just keeping this shit. But it's like, yeah, I, gotta, I go to work. I wear those shoes to the gym. It's like I need to just get. I'm every time I go buy another one, I'm afraid that they're gonna be gone. But now, what would you do if you had two pairs? Stock up, like two different kinds of shoes. Would you switch them out? Yeah, probably. But it's like uh, I might just end up buying like twelve pairs of them. Just ride this out for the next eight years. That is some Einstein stuff there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like those guys who used to do lean back in the day, Uh promethazine. Yeah. And that's that's all illegal now. Yeah. So you can't even find like real lean anymore. Right. But the guys who stocked up, now you'd say it's like 200 bucks a bottle. Yeah. Just to get fucked up. Yeah. Get super glued to the carpet. Drive around real slow. They might make your Adidas illegal. You never know. Well, all these shoes, yeah, they, they might switch out the recipes or, you know. There might be some other guys out there who are also trying to stock up like me. I got a wide foot myself, so it's like, you know, I'm on, I'm limited to certain types of shoes. I need that wide. You got to get the Reeboks. Yeah, Reeboks, yeah. those Diodors, those Italian ones. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. We're some little wide feet people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those shoes, they got to fit everybody. It's just like keeping, uh, you know. Keeping your car fresh, though. Or, but I don't know if sneakers are like that, but dress shoes. Now, when you got like those wood color or something crazy all shined up. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, they're I all bent at I've the toe. Like, you never? Good dress shoes. Yeah. Dress shoes are always something you buy like once and then you just keep it in the closet. Yeah. You got a funeral How coming How many up. weddings or something you go to? Yeah. What's the cheapest pair? Yeah. Something black. Yeah. Something that's black true, that's going to match my black I don't belt. I like the buckle on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Man, God love those discount stores. What would I have done in my life without a discount store? I went to Saks once just to walk around, prank some people. I couldn't believe I was like, people are spending a thousand dollars for a sweater. Yeah. I mean like at the store itself it's like very tastefully like spaced out too. Yeah. Everything looks like it's kind of in, in the same thing with like uh Bloomingdale's. And they treat their job for real. Yeah. You'll piss them off. Like I told a dude, I said, man, you should be selling used cars. He's like, why would I do that? I'm a cloth- I sell clothing. Yeah, well, that's like the only, that's the only level of retail where that's actually like a good job. Yeah. Working at like a place like that. I could never get the, the clothing store jobs in the mall. They'd be like, come on, man. Look, like, you know, we need people that can look. We're trying to make money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at you. I'd see you me. See, yeah, you see that Greek restaurant over there? I'd be in That's like. That's your speed right you there. You know what I used to wear on the regular? I'd wear shirts from like fairs. Like, <laughs> you know, the Italian. Like bootleg South Park just, shirt. Oh, dude, I would have that. The, the South Park uh, Cartman on the South Park shirt. I had one ward every day for six months. Yeah. It's like I had a Hawkamania yellow shirt, like the wow. cut off, just wore that. It's like an alien smoking a joint. <laughs> some yeah. trash shit like that. Yeah. Always had some weird stuff. Or like the Italian fest, I was here, you know, I ate the sausage. Wow. <laughs> I just wear that. I'd have that sweater on for a month. Be like every day, man. Nobody hung out with me, really. A couple kids. Back then, though, that you wanted to get a shirt that said something on it. Back then, I just had about four shirts, uh, yeah. and I just cycle them through like months at a time. And the neck is all stretched out. Yeah, like yeah. for me, it was a good thing we had uniforms because uh, yeah. I'd be wearing the same shirt every day. Wow! Did it get like your shit got stretched out in the front? Um, That's the trash look right there. 
No, you know what? I they start people start I and start biting p- on it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> chewing on, stretching on the neck. Yeah. I don't know. It probably was to be yeah. honest. I cut the sleeves off a lot of them. That's how you can tell someone's got bad parents. <laughs> so letting them chew on their shirt. Yeah, stop chewing your damn <laughs> the hell chewing your damn shirt. Yeah, I got washed that shirt myself. Yeah, man. And you know, some parents, these guys are crazy, dude. I had this guy who was coming along. He was like one of these friend of the family type guys and just started coming to all the parties and like, you know, a few people called him uncle or whatever. But either way, so <laughs> he would bring his son. His son always had like some crazy nice clothes on. He was, the, it's recording. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> it was the. I'm going to do that a few times <laughs> just so you know. So, you know, it's the, you know, when the parents get the divorce and then the ones trying to overcompensate. Yeah. Like, so you should have put up with my verbal abuse because now look what you're missing out on. I got hired all the jersey for our son. It'd be like that. So kid always had the expensive everything and he'd spill something on his shirt and in front of everybody he'd make a scene he'd be like come here he'd be like come here show everybody he'd have to show him he'd be like now who bought you that shirt he'd be like you did (laughs) oh wow (laughs) right and then he'd be like and tell him tell him what you told me in the car Uh, my mommy hooked up with the mailman it's like for real i'm not making it up and we'd just be sitting there all we'd all have to listen to it (laughs) <laughs> See, it's one of those things where it's like, thank God we grew up when we did. Because if th- that guy now had TikTok, oh, that kid man. would be on there all day long saying yeah. the most foul shit. <laughs> those are the parent. Those are the parents who want to go viral. Yeah, yeah. That dude, that would be. Do all, I say it now? It would be Facebook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the video that starts and kind of pausing for a second. You just yeah. see, see the hand behind the camera. The kid looks all nervous. Yeah. My dad says that I can have. Yeah. Yeah. Can I go outside now? <laughs> <laughs> My daddy's a deadbeat. Can I go outside and play now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, it's sad sometimes. I mean, I get it. There is sometimes those deadbeat parents, but like, dude, I don't want to be around. I was around somebody before, like uh, th- their kids, and you just tell you, like, got the kid rolling blunts for him, and it's like, what are you? Doing? You're not giving this kid a chance in life. Yeah, there's no bedtime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kids just staying up and just like watching porn or something yeah it's, when's he when's jonathan going to bed yeah when he feels like it <laughs> yeah yeah we don't tell jonathan what to do in this house you yeah. get that mother kid wants to watch rated r movies it's on him yeah it's like, go oh. paint yeah <laughs> well it's the kid when i was growing up because my family it was very like normal so i'd be hanging out at my friend's house and i'd be like would you guys eat dinner <laughs> and he's just like no i mean we eat whenever you know you just kind of eat whenever you feel like it wow and i'm like man this is a fucked up house yeah i ran into this girl i haven't seen her in forever man i ran into her one time i went back home i went to go visit her she was uh my first like girlfriend in school like the first girl i kissed yeah and um either way she got five kids now and i went over her house i knew nothing about the kids we're just there hanging out and uh dude she's like the kid jumps up on my lap and teeth are all you know those oreos everywhere his teeth are all black and i think i told you this and i'm like oh you're eating oreos and she's like no his teeth are rot those are his baby teeth no sense in doing nothing with them wow I'm just like whoa dude man like for kind of real logic is that yeah, they're going to fall out anyway. And I'd look at her, and she didn't have no damn teeth. I'm like, She's my age. Wow. It's like, yeah, teeth is not the specialty in this household. Jesus Christ. If I can just get one baby daddy to do something right, that's what she would say. Wow. I bet those Oreos, it's like the package is opened, and they're all like the front five are all stale. <laughs> yeah. You just got to flip past them and get to the good ones yeah. in the back. Yeah. They were up all night. There was a little house party. Mommy had some work friends over. No Tupperware in the house. Cigarettes everywhere. Oh, yeah. You ain't getting Tupperware them, doesn't match. The lids don't match the <laughs> yeah. Tupperware. Yeah. It's trash. Got to put rubber bands on it. Let me tell you, that's why if, you should never have a family if you can't have dinner with your family. Right. I firmly believe of all the traditions in the family, that is so important. Or it's a even, family should eat dinner around a table. No TV. You're right. Not at a couch. They gotta talk about their day. Even if you're like not a, like a chatty family, I get that. But it's like we can't all be. You can't just eat whenever you feel like eating on the couch in front <laughs> yeah. of the TV. We're not in college here. Right. There's little kids in the family. Everybody at least have the decency to sit around the table. Yeah, you're right. Get that connection. Yeah, that's what like that's what this country needs. Have some Tupperware that matches. 
Anytime you meet people who like, oh no, we were like a different kind of parents. It's like, no, you're bad parents. Right. Yeah. This is a reason the system works. Yeah. Go around the world. People eat dinner. I think it would make a difference. You meet up at the table, you talk about, so everybody gets their turn. To, so what happened in school and you're true. You Even know, you if can, it's boring, you still do it. Well, it's it, you got to class it up in different ways. Like when somebody in your family tells you something, like maybe your wife complains about Jill at work. Now you got to treat your food all stressed out a little. Let her know you care. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's her turn to talk. Yeah. Eventually, it'll come back to you. <laughs> Jill still didn't get it. Yeah, and I'll talk about football for a while. Yeah. But yeah, you get you sit around the table. You got to make sure you just have, like, the matching tablecloths. Yeah. Like, the placemat with, like, a plate. Get that jug of, like, orange juice or something mm-hmm. in the middle of the table. That's how, like, psychologically, you really know that, like, you're in, like, a good place. Yeah. This is, like, stability. But I remember going to kids' houses when I was growing up and, like, these kids who were, like, divorced or something. They're just, like, eating in their room and there's just, like, fucking stuff everywhere. Yeah, dude, I remember I spent the night at my buddy's house and I seen he had a little bag, a little bit of chips left. There was, like, an inch or so of chips in the bag. And I'm just like, oh, did you want to bring those chips upstairs? And he goes, "Uh, I don't know, can we? And, dude, I'm just (laughs) like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know, you guys... I was like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, dude, we eat chips in my house all the time. Yeah. He goes, okay. His dad beat his ass over wow. these chips so bad. Dude, it was crazy. Like, the whole family broke up. While you were there. Over these chips. Yeah, he had to spend the night in my house. It was a reverse. Oh, my God. Dude, I went, to, he, I went to his house to spend the night. And then, you know, he ended up coming over to my house at, like, 5 in the morning. Wow. Dad was drunk, just a lunatic, went completely nuts, tried burning the house down. Dude, all over some so chips. So it was your fault, though, with the chips. <laughs> yeah, it really was. <laughs> yeah, that kid kind of had a feeling about this is going to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I was like, dude, you want some chips? He was just in the corner rocking. He's like, do you think I'll see my friends again? I'm like, I, buddy, I don't know. Wow. That was the other thing, though, is that, like, there were some kids who's, who – parents or their household was like chaos and you go to some other people's house and it's like that where they're just scared all the time <laughs> right everybody's on edge like that's also no good painting the basement at 5 a.m well what it's like guys ki- doing? yeah it's like the kid wants to go get some water in the middle of the night he's like ah, i don't want to yeah <laughs> yeah they're gonna know yeah and it's like now we everybody lives here yeah we used to sneak around my house me and my brother we'd stay up late all night crawl around the house we had a good time yeah that's a wholesome way to spend a night yeah but some some people where it's like that same story would be like no we would just steal somebody's car and drive around you know (laughs) yeah do something wild yep in the middle of the night even like did you did your did you have like soda in the house when you're growing up yeah no we had stuff i actually stayed away from soda a lot after a certain while I used to drink, I used to be one of those kids that would be drinking just like we've seen around here, just 20 ounces when I'm four years old or whatever, putting down a Big Mac. I just, something happened with regular soda when I was like maybe 12. I just don't drink it. It's Uh either diet or club soda. Oh, you were drinking diet soda? Well, now, like now, but no, Uh when I was 12, regular sodas, but I just, I think I just overdid it. That and bologna. Yeah, you can't yeah. even look at dude. I don't want nothing. You ever just smack bologna a little bit on your lips, and you're like, uh, "Man, I don't want this shit." It's too too smooth. You smell it. You can't you can't look at it and figure out like what animal am I looking yeah, at? Here? Yeah, real malleable. I hate chewing it. I like fried bologna. I could deal with it if I'm real hungry, but a regular just bologna out the fridge. Just regular like white bread like that too. Oh uh, like, yeah, Wonder Bread where it's all soft and you I just hate like that. crush it up. Yeah. That's not how bread should feel. My parents didn't let me drink like soda when I was a little kid. I mean, it would be like sometimes you're at McDonald's or something. But at the house, you didn't have any soda. And I remember thinking like, because there were certain things I'd get jealous of my friends. Uh You go to their house and they can drink all the soda they want. For some reason, the soda, even when I was a little kid, I was like, no, they're probably right on this. <laughs> they they get this. This isn't something I'm gonna sneak yeah. around on them. Or it's like, no, this is this is a good look. Sixty two grams of sugar in a soda. I yeah, really yeah. can. I don't even think my parents were like health nuts, but I think they just had a sense. Like, no, this this you gotta draw the line somewhere. Right. Yeah, soda's definitely a problem. I don't see how some kids could drink a ton of sodas and never gain weight. No, I mean they you see them in twenty years. Yeah, I it mean, adds like, on. Yeah, yeah, I mean like your system is getting worn down. Even yeah, even in this neighborhood, fucking eight-year-old kids are already like, <laughs> yeah, one sixty. 
Yeah, we see him. It's crazy. I posted that video. So at the gym, I was 186, but I probably, I don't know that scale, I guess, was a couple pounds off. If I got people commenting like, you don't weigh as much as my son, it's like, I don't know who's in the wrong here. I've told him, I'm telling you, <laughs> 300 is the number. That's crazy. Anything under 300 is not fat in this country anymore. Wow. Yeah, hey, you still got another 120 pounds to go before. Yeah, before it's a problem. You cross the line. I still think people will be inspired because I got some pictures of me bloated I took from the right angle. I look real fat, and I'm going to use that for the before pictures. You know what sparked this diet? I'll tell you, actually. It pays good to have some mean friends. My buddy, we're on vacation. She uses, she's a prankster. She's always joking with me. She uses a fat filter and sends me a picture of me eating a cheeseburger uh, with wow. the fat filter it looks so real dude i, I you can't tell that it's a filter i couldn't tell until she told me uh, i wow. instantly was pushing away the food that's what sparked all this wow and then she told me it was a filter oh wow but i'm happy i either way i needed that you gotta that's see where I'm going yeah, yeah i mean especially pictures because you can't really see yourself until you see certain angles <laughs> Mm -hmm. but like uh yeah that's what we're always talking about is the if you take off your shirt and you sit like that in a chair uh, it's not gonna yeah <laughs> yeah dude it's not gonna look good there's no way you can like tighten up well if i had tattoos and stuff even then though your gut is always like yeah but that, if it's tatted up dude you now nah, you it. see rick ross sitting like that in a chair that is yeah, fat as hell look at those prison dudes they're all tatted up when i first came into the fifth pod now here's one thing well those Steamy, guys you're not seeing them from the, the wrong angles they, yeah they know they the know camera. where to look at you yeah <laughs> I mean, the prison documentary, they don't want him to look like a fat guy in prison. But yeah. Everybody who sits in that angle is going to look, it's not going to be a good look for you. Yeah, I remember I used to be one of those dudes that drove around with no shirt on, and you just see my little gut right there <laughs> picking up little Mountain Dews. Well, you know, I mean, like, it looks cool from outside the car. Yeah. Yeah, you just got your arm out the door. Uh-huh. Yeah, a little bit sunburned. Yeah, you check for cars quicker than you normally would. <laughs> yeah. He's... <laughs> Reach your arm out and smack this out of the door. Yeah, it used yeah. to be all about the tweeters. You wanted people to hear your tweeters. Uh, <laughs> your trunk is rattling. Yeah, but it was all about the tweeters, dude. I had these Paizo tweeters. I adjust them real high. The, the, What's the tweeter? Is it? The tweeters like the highs. You got the highs, the mids, and the lows. Oh. So you got the tweeters for the high music, then the six by nines, and then the subs. The low, yeah. See, but you get those tweeters, man. You get a good song on, you could hear them tweeters in the trees just. Oh, uh, wow. I'm telling you. I always think about it. It was always just subs. One time a girl got in my car. She was like, man, those sound, them tweeters sound good. I couldn't believe she knew it. Wow. She was yeah, like, I mean, I, I always just, I feel like everybody's car I ever got in, there was always just way too much bass. Yeah. We you just can't hear shit. Every, every song sounds the same. We well, used to have to get like rubber or something put between your license plate and your car. Uh, yeah. So you don't hear that license plate rattling. <laughs> you yeah. Know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 always, yeah. There would always be some guy who was way too, pre I, don't, I never knew anything about stereo, so I don't even know what they were talking about. But he's telling me about his, his new stereo. He's always so excited about it. We go yeah. to his car. I'm like, I can't tell what the fuck we're listening to right now. It's got all these lights, little bass cap. Yeah, 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 well, it just takes up his entire trunk. Some ludicrous in there. You can't keep anything in his trunk anymore. Yeah, I mean, once people started putting the little lights and the little fish bowls, it's like, dude, what? You don't need a little fish bowl in your yeah, trunk. Right, improve your house. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. What are you doing? But it was all about them tweeters. Yeah. What if that's just when you're going back home? What if you just get stuck back in that? I, I mean, that ain't a problem to be first, stuck in. First day back? I'd have a little Just hanging out in the parking lot? Chrome axles on my car? Yeah, checking out someone's tires. Yeah, dude, I'd get some, some nice stuff. Candy Apple Monte Carlo or old Cutlass Supreme or something. Right. Box body. Just roll around town. Hell yeah. Get Cruising. Some tweeters in there, some subs. Put a little sunroof in it. Mm. Are you going to drive when you're back home? I'm getting my license again. I got to oh, take yeah. the test and everything. You're going to take a driving test? Yeah. Wow. I got to do, uh, I got to figure out a way to. You got to borrow someone's car though, right? Well, yeah, but there's all this other stuff too. Like, uh, you know, I got to have a mailed letter to the address because 
Otherwise, I got to do it in New York. I don't know what the steps would be here. I probably could have did it easy. Like the, I don't want to well, take the driving. You already test expired, right? Yeah. So you got yeah. That's too late now. It's too late now. I'm better yeah. off getting um taking the test in Ohio. Wow. How do you feel about this test? I gotta study for it, man. I don't have time to do shit. There's no written part, though, right? You're yeah, just, there is. Oh, you yeah. gotta do the whole and I, permit here's part. Here's the problem. I, oh, no. I studied the whole permit thing when I was in Minnesota with uh, my ex's nose surgery, and that's all I did. I studied, dude, for hours. I you studied the, the Ohio one. Yeah, and then you take the practice test online, uh, dude. I aced it like twenty times in a row. Oh wow! So then I go to Ohio to take the test, and uh, they go, oh, "Yeah, you can't take it because." Um, you know, you need mail sent here. You need your, I had my passport. They want your passport, your birth certificate, and your social security card. I'm thinking a passport's the thing, you know, right. but I guess not. So I got to, I had to come back and get all those. Um, well, they get, you got to prove that you live in Ohio, right? Yeah. And then that too. How are you going to do that? You know, like I'm going to use a MacBook. <laughs> but I mean, you got to show them that. You yeah, show just them print mail? something up. Oh, all right. <laughs> Hey, don't I, I'm on your side. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not, not a cop. <laughs> How do you feel about the actual driving part, though? You think they're well, going to hit they, you with the, with the parallel parking and shit? Well, people tell me now it's just in a building and you go around back and just parallel park. You don't go on the road anymore. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Man. They don't make you, they don't even test you out with some red lights? No. Left turns or anything? Well, I guess they just have you go around this little area in the back parking lot, I guess. Oh, wow. It's like a big parking lot, and then you do the parallel parking. I mean, there's some traffic lights back there, so I guess... It's probably just like a safety thing for them. Yeah. They don't want to send you out into traffic. Yeah, so that's how you take the test, and you just go around back, boom, 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 parallel park. The parallel park's set up all the time, so I'm going to go there and practice the day before. They got some cones up there? Yeah, and there's a way with parallel parking. You know, you match your mirror to this thing, then you turn the wheel. There's a little mathematical equation to help you with it. Well, it's all about what well, you got to practice in the certain car. Yeah. Especially if you're driving a little hatchback. Right. You just whip it in. Oh, dude, that's the best. Yeah. I was, I mean, like, I was never great at parallel parking, but there was always, like, you could feel it. Yeah. At certain times when it's like, no, I'm going to nail this one. Yeah. And then, yeah. Boom, hop out the car, put the club on the wheel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, that, those were the good old days. Yeah. What kind of car are you, you going to? I'm taking in probably a huge Silverado army truck or something. Yeah, you take your sister's <laughs> big ass truck. <laughs> yeah. You try to parallel park that thing. Put in first gear. Hold on to your <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah. No, you got to take the test in like a little Civic. Well, I don't got that option. Yeah, a little Toyota Yaris. Yeah, oh, that would be nice, dude. Yeah. I wish I had a little Yaris right now. Oh, yeah. You got a Yaris? Getting that thing and just drive. They're rare. they're hard to get. Uh, yeah. I mean, you try to get an older one, cheap, good, low miles. Uh, yeah. People hold on to them Yaris's. Those little Mazda hatchbacks or like a smart car. Yeah. Where it says, yeah, you could just zoom right in. Is that even, now, if you use one of those, is that even taking a test, really? You see these cars that come in the mail in Europe. Like you put the engine in. A little Mini that, Cooper? It's like a little, I don't even know, not even a Mini Cooper. It's a one-seater. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a golf cart. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah. Little engine like the size of my arm. I think you can just get in that. Yeah, I don't think they really like you don't even need a license for that. I mean, but what if you took your driving test in that? Well, I guess you can't. You need the instructor. Yeah, yeah you with need you. a two seater. Damn. Damn. Even taking a driving test, though, in like a little hatchback, that's already kind of cheating. Oh, a little 94. Mini Cooper. You got the seat way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could parallel park front, front end. You don't even got to go back in. I'd have to go and bring a girl with me to drive the driver crazy. Have my girl chewing gum all in her ear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just distract her a little, you know? I'm originally from Brooklyn. It'll be fun after you pass the test. You gotta like have like a crazy celebration, like you're 16 again. Yeah, try to climb a rope. <laughs> no, but I mean like you gotta go to Burger King with your family. Oh, can you yeah, imagine? Little Dommy passed his test. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he did it first try. Dommy passed. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, Dommy passed. The boy got his license. <laughs> People Ring hitting it. you up on Facebook. Congratulations <laughs> on ringing the a cowbell. <laughs> yeah, the boy passed. 38. Yeah. We're, all, we're all going to Red Lobster. <laughs> I'm going to give him my old car. Give me a new <laughs> yeah. car. Yeah. Now, listen, now, you don't got reverse, son. Yeah, you got to drive around in some fucked up minivan. Park on hills. Yeah. It's crazy how cheap those minivans are, man. Like, minivans are pretty cheap nowadays. You get one that's really beat to shit. Oh, uh, yeah. 
I think people, uh, because of gas mileage, people don't want to buy those kind of cars anymore. Wow. I was thinking, man, if I can go back in time, I would have bought a minivan from Ohio for like 300 bucks. They're dirt cheap, 400 bucks, and I would have just lived in it. In in New York? Yeah. You can do that now if you want. I mean, yeah, but now I don't (laughs) need to, but at the point in time when I needed to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was broke, man. I was, you know. I think I even then, though, living in that kind of van in the city, it, it provides its own headaches. I'd park it in West Village somewhere, make it a little party. But, I mean, you would have to constantly move it around, and if it broke down, you'd be, you know. Yeah. You're stuck somewhere. Yeah. Everybody I've ever known who's ever tried to pull off the van thing, they always regret it. After a year. It never lasts even a year. Four cavities later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you can't floss in a van. Well, I mean, it's always just the logistics of having to, like, I got to get back to my van. I got to move it over here. Clutching a pistol at night. Yeah, and you're like, oh, the gym's closed, so now I'm just shitting on the oh, street. That'll ruin your day. It's fucking Memorial Day. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I can't work out. Yeah, this is a free country. Yeah, right. I thought I'd pay for Equinox. Yeah. Sorry, I can't come on the date unless I could shower at your house. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I knew a guy who was like uh, keeping his van. He's trying to keep his van a secret from his girlfriend. Yeah, she as if she wasn't gonna know. He just made like a twenty thousand dollar purchase. Or something. Oh wow! Yeah, he, she she tried to make him sell it. He, he pretended that he sold it. He was like, "Nah, I still got the van." Wow. Yeah. Man, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough. It's a tough. I hope my life never gets to that. Yeah. I remember one guy, man. Um, he had found three dollars in a car. We kind of both found it at the same time, but you know, he I seen he needed it more. You know, mm. and he's like, "Can I just have it? Do you mind?" I was like, "No." Nah. You know, I was like, "I don't give a shit." You yeah. Know? And then uh, I was like, "Yeah, it's all good." And he tucks it away, and he and he goes, "Hold on, I gotta show you something." So I'm like, what the hell? And he's like all secretive. And he's like, come on, all right, come here. And he shows me in his locker, he has like a fake bottom. And he's got like $9 under there. He goes, this is something I keep away from the wife. She don't know about this. Wow. And I'm just like, is this like this is what it comes down to Jesus in life Christ. when you're married? He's you keeping like bus fare to get away. Nine bucks. He goes, yeah, you know, she won't let me go to that McDonald's and get them cheeseburgers no more. Wow. But it's like these wives are watching. See, you I know want, he's got that thing on his phone where she can track his, his little dot. Right. Yeah. Oh, he's probably walking to McDonald's getting that. Fuck, all I need is ten fifty. Yeah. You got to leave your phone in the bushes and yeah. walk around the block a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks because like those, it's only getting harder. If you got yeah. like, if your wife's a bully these days, it's right. like she can really like. She's yeah. got you on ring cameras. And you could always tell the bully, she'll be like, and I don't want you following mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should, her, your Apple Pay is fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. She's got your email password. You know, I hate to say it, but I see you getting one of those wives, like a real dominant woman, just like. She's going to bully me around. Yeah, yelling at you. I could, because you let stuff go. I mean, you kind of, if it's not worth the problem, you just let it slide. I could see that, but I mean, I probably wouldn't stick around. I don't think. If she was just yelling at you, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't deal with the yelling. <laughs> but it's like uh, I told you, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'd be out of that pretty quick. She'd have to. You know what it would be? She'd say your name all weird. That's what they do. Okay, Dan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say you're like yeah, Daniel something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's like I think uh, <laughs> the thing with those guys is that like. You got to get, you got to take care of that kind of thing quick. Yeah. Because once you get pushed around a few times, once she's got your phone locked up. Right. And it's like, then you're really in trouble. Yeah. We got to take care of this at the source. And you know that, how do you think that guy turned out? Right. He probably, you think he's, he's probably still going through it. Oh yeah. No, he's still married to her for sure. And he's still working there. I seen wow. him last time I was there. Yeah. He actually told me when I was, when I quit for New York, he's the one that he told me when I was leave. I didn't, I didn't quit yet. I had just one day I came to New York on vacation. Right. And I was yeah. secretly not telling anybody I was going to try to move here. And I drove here, got so scared, turned around, went right back home oh, with wow. all my stuff in my car. And like, I was only in New York for 45 minutes. Wow. And, uh, I went back home 
and went to work, but he kind of knew I was thinking about moving there. He was like the only guy. And a couple of weeks went by. He goes, yep, you're never going to move to New York. You're going to be here all your life like me, wasting, wasting your life. Wow. And I was like, nah, I quit. I didn't even quit yet, but I told him I quit. So I went in the office, quit, drove to New York. Wow. Yep. What a story. Yeah, man. Well, that guy's got... 12 bucks in his locker. Yeah. Hey, that's his getaway plan right there. I still see him. He's like, you think you're going to stay out there? I'm like, it's been 13 years. Oh, yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I think you could say I made it at this point. If I leave, it's on my own recognizance. People always think that like you're always going to end end up going back. Yeah. People, <laughs> that's always the question. Are you moving back? It's like, why? I, yeah. yeah I, I left. <laughs> what do you think the plan was? Are you like, yeah. yeah. Oh, you can move back yeah, to San they Diego. Do. So you really taking that New York shit for real, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah, I think it's it's been long enough at this point. <laughs> I seen you. You actually got it. You signed a lease up there, huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, I wonder what it's like to just like, because you know that those kinds of guys who like whose wife is like super bullying them around. Yeah, they look forward to going to work. Yeah, they do. They want to go to work just because they don't want to. They want to get out of the house. Yeah, they just want an excuse or like. If if they're at home and they're like, oh, write a paper towels, boom, they got to go get paper, right. paper I'll towels. I'll get them. I'll get them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't worry. I'm going to go. Do <laughs> uh, we need anything yeah. else? And then that's how you just end up walking around Costco for, you know, two hours. And you always know who those guys are because every two minutes they're throwing a dig off. Oh, Lizzie knew about that. Oh, forget uh, about it. I'd be in trouble. She's got my balls. Oh, uh, Lizzie wouldn't have that. Mama yeah. don't play around. <laughs> <laughs> Those are those guys you see them at, on vacation. They don't want to go do shit. Yeah, legs are just ripped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As they got to go take some walking tour of Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. All the guy wants to do is sit on the beach. Drink a cold one. Yeah, play some fantasy football. Yeah. Instead of his fucking wife is making him go on a nature walk. Yeah, it's all about the memories, John. Yeah. She's making them go to the comedy show. Oh uh, yeah, he's like I don't want to go see fucking. Some and fucking you know comedy. he don't. One dude <laughs> told me too. His wife brought him to every show, right? And he tells me afterwards he was like a Russian dude or whatever. Uh, he goes, I don't like the comedy, you know. He goes, that girl stuff, my wife. He goes, I like man stuff, drinking, women gamble, you know. Uh, Not no comedy for girls, you know. I'm like, this is what some people in other countries really think. Like, I kind of get it. You go, you go somewhere, you want to see some action. Yeah. You want to see some dude talking up there. Yeah. Let's see you fight somebody. Yeah, you're right. You want to go see like uh, Medieval Times or Throw something. Throw some money on it. Yeah. Imagine going to, you go, go to Thailand and you watch some boxing. Yeah. You watch just two like warriors, like teenagers just beat the shit out of each other. Me and you should go to Thailand. We should do That's a little cement. podcast, a little trip. Yeah. Cause it, a little retreat. Bangkok. I mean, like that's all my TikTok is now. It's dudes who are escaping to Bangkok. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all like, that's like the new, I mean, it's always been the place, but now, especially if people, guys are just moving out there, you live in a nice apartment for like 600 bucks a month. Well, I think that actually had a lot to do with those Van Damme movies. Like in our generation. No, like, well, now it's like, uh, those, that was like when you're moving into the jungle. Yeah. Something. That was like you're moving into the road. Now it's like you go to Thailand. It looks like you're moving into like, you know, New Jersey or something. Oh, wow. All right, so you get into like a nice luxury building for like. 600 bucks a month all inclusive but you know how do these people get these green cards to do that or like i think it's visas? a little tricky yeah you gotta do something where you like you visit for like three months and then you go out of the country for a day and you come back or yeah something like that. i know there's something with people inviting you with america because every time i meet i get these workers on these cruise ships gorgeous women coming up to me smiling you want to follow me on facebook they take my facebook whatsapp and this happens all the time yeah whatsapp <laughs> a too. lot of whatsapp they're, they're selling something they send themselves messages on facebook saying i want to see you come to america or like are you going to come to america and these things too it's happened 15 times i know when they're going to type it now i'm like wait are you going to put come to america they'll get all shy and hand me the wow. phone back because it's their little hustle you need like three or four of those i it's don't think that's like a legal thing i bet they're just trying to show their family back home <laughs> they're not like i'm not they're not just leaving they're like oh no look this guy yeah this, this fat piece of shit from ohio i'm, I'm gonna like, bring back a husband yeah well they're gonna leave and you know i met this dude man i felt so bad for this dude we were doing these gigs in georgia and he brought his wife along and she's criticizing my comedy but she was like from the philippines but she's living in america she married him he was a war guy like he fought in the army and shit met yeah. her 
met her over there. And um, anyways, dude, she she brought her like sister over. She brought her parents over. He was taking care of wow. all of them. And then uh, she's just divorcing them like the end of the year. Like it's planned out. Oh, my God. And they're just at the comedy show. She's critiquing my comedy. I'm like, yeah, I'm not. I was like, thanks for your opinion. Like, wow. You know, I think I could critique some shit that you just did too. Yeah. 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 He's just got to take it. Yeah, he's just sitting there all quiet. Jeez. I bet you he can't wait till she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you get trapped in that kind of situation. I guess it's just not reversible. I mean, wouldn't form. that be, okay, so now you bring your sister. Maybe you're just a good guy. Then you bring your mother over. You know, she's got kids with him too. Just done. Kids are like 11 and 13. Oh, wow. Well, the kids can like, you know, you stay in the country now. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess it's, it's a good look for her. But. but it was just all big part of a big plan. Wow. All that guy wanted was to get a wife who didn't, who couldn't talk. Right. He just wants some peace and quiet in the house, and that's how you end up. And I'll tell you what, she's not only did she speak, she spoke well yeah, and yeah. a lot. She's probably pretending to not speak English when they met. She knew laws. She's talking about <laughs> yeah. how she could sue this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she knows OSHA laws. Yeah. yeah. That's what you, yeah. I mean, like, everybody thinks that they're going to, like, get away with something once they get that mail order bride from the Philippines, but it's like, no, there's no free lunch in this world. You know, one thing I noticed working with all the people from the Philippines, they love KFC. Do we go to these exotic countries? They always go find the KFC. Wow. And they come back with the buckets all smiling. They take their time. Like the whole crew, the crew dining cafeteria is a whole different vibe when there's KFC buckets wow. down. It's like they just like. They get like the big bucket and they share. Yeah. No, yeah, it's just buckets, dude. And, wow. And sides. If you just, go to KFC in other countries, it's like way better. That's what they I, always, I never. They always say that on TikTok. If you go to like South Africa, or yeah, something, their KFC is like top notch. I never want to eat at a place from America when I'm somewhere else. So I don't know, but there is KFCs out there, and there's. I mean, lines. like you go into Japan. In Japan, KFC is like uh, people love it. I might have to do a KFC in Japan. I mean, you're there for like a day. You don't want. To. I could eat a lot. You don't want to waste a. A KFC. No, you're on. Yeah, you're right. You're getting fit with Mo. Yeah, you are. But right. no, like the KFC in Japan. I think it's on Thanksgiving. Wow. American Thanksgiving, a tradition in Japan. Everybody goes to KFC and gets like a big bucket of chicken. Wow. Yeah. It is good. When's the last time you had KFC? This I, one is shit. Yeah, you can't even eat it this yeah. one. Forget. Dude, you got to physically fight somebody to put a meal order yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. It's like. There's no seats. Or yeah, anything. I didn't know we were going to have to literally get in a fist fight. That yeah, dude's yeah. taking off his apron from behind the counter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like they're on TikTok scrolling. You're just, Everything, can I please? Fast food in New York City is, is just not a good. Yeah, it's just not a good place for it. Yeah, because you can never keep up. You ever see the make? Well, not anymore, but the old McDonald's Times Square, like the Big Dog uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. The amount of business it never stopped. Like I used uh -huh. to hang out there. But I mean, like KFC, if you get it like in the suburbs or something, though, it's not bad. Yeah, like it's Ohio good for sure. I grew up off of it. Yeah. Now if KFC Churches. is banging. Honestly, I'll be honest. It's it might start controversy. It's better than Popeyes to me. I'm sorry. I mean, the sandwich is better at Popeye's, but the actual, like, you get, like... A, the bucket of chicken Five-piece chicken, yeah, yeah. It's better at KFC. The biscuits, mac and cheese. Everything else is better quality. Yeah. Same thing with churches. But, yeah, these are all... I mean, like, if you go to other countries, I think they, like... It's actually, like, set up real good. I used to like that out west, that Roscoe chicken and waffles. You ever hit that up? Oh, well, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. The I thing with a lot of these impressed. fried chickens is that it's, like... KFC is kind of better than even like home cooked fried chicken. Yeah, because just because like all you really need is just like mega grease, and, you know, and the thirty two specials or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why it's like it fits so well in other countries. Is that like especially the Philippines? That entire culture is all meat. Yeah, it's all just grilling different kinds of meat and frying lumpia and stuff like that. Wow! So like KFC, it comes into the cultures like that, and it's like, oh no, this is gangbusters right here. I'm telling you, bro, they love it. <laughs> well, I think too they're they're just spending all this time on this fucking ship, right, away from home, and they're around all these fat Americans. Yeah, all they want to do is just like no, eat some KFC, let's get some buckets going. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they like the communal aspect of it too. Yeah, I'm sure they it's do. It's like a family. It's like a shared thing. It's not. It like really get, is. It's not like McDonald's. Everybody gets their own burger. It's yeah. Like, no, we're getting a big ass bucket. The, 
Imagine you grow up in a poor culture like that, where yeah. you're always everything is hand to mouth. Everybody looks like Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, and then just like the symbolism of a big bucket of chicken. Yeah, this is like a, a <laughs> little kid can't even, A little kid can't even wrap his arm around it. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> in those cultures, they're eating like you know <laughs> runaway little ass chickens. <laughs> yeah, this was like no, this is bountiful. Yeah, this looks like a tre- this is a treasure chest of chicken. <laughs> yeah, look at them. Look yeah, at them. You can with reach. The you reach your arm to yeah. reach to the bottom. It's like we have so much chicken, we don't even know how to carry it. Yeah, dude, you're right. Nah, you're a wise man because when you do look, they are very communal. Yeah. Like they all eat together, like literally right off each other's plates. Yeah, and they're all, I mean, they're all probably kind of related to Real touching. Like yeah. even when you meet them, they'll let you be part of their posse too. Like they'll just start putting, the, they just walk with their arm around you. It's a real loving. And you know when those guys, they they eat that bucket of chicken. Once you're done with that chicken, those chicken bones are going in some broth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know they're they're keeping the they're getting the marrow out of that. I didn't even think about that. You're yeah, right. If they had some dogs, they'd be throwing those bones out there. You know, yeah, it's a whole party. Yeah, dude, it's a very communal party. Yeah, and they love it. So you're just down there with them when you're. <laughs> yeah, I just hang with the crew all the time now because you could eat upstairs. And don't get me wrong, I love the cruising life. I love meeting people. But when I'm eating and people come up to you, some people's eating etiquette isn't the best. Yeah. And they're just spit. Oh, I went down to Kentucky, and it's just you gotta be like, oh, I don't want to be rude, but now I gotta throw this away. Like, all right. So I've been hanging in the crew mess with the singers and like the other entertainers. We kind of eat down there. Oh. Nobody talks to us. I mean. I meet like the workers and stuff, practice Mandarin when I get a chance. Yeah. But other than that, you know. You just get to be off to your side? Yeah, just chill with like a uh, singer by myself. Oh, yeah. They got, but the downstairs food is way better. They live off of it. It's like, dude, there's hummus, there's like chickpeas, there's the vegetables are even fresher, I feel like. I don't know. <laughs> the other well, stuff's just caked in dressing, cheese pork the people upstairs are all drunk too right so yeah they're not really thinking about too much about their food they're all smacking you on the back coughing on you dude you're just like all right wow checking out your pineapple situation yeah that's a big thing where'd you get that then they always want to tell you about one place on the ship like i don't know about it did you ever eat at that burger place that you can't miss right when you walk in (laughs) says free burgers yeah that's the place it's hard to find Mm. <laughs> Man, I got to get on these cruises, bro. You really do. You'll meet I some sent, people. I emailed the guy. I got to figure this out. I told you the most interesting man I met on the cruises was that dude. He told me he was CIA, he was agent, he was all this stuff. And he went through. I can't even believe he found somebody to do it, but he got. he's doing like he got a breast job put on. Oh, right. He yeah, was yeah. like 70. Wow. And dude, just talking to that dude, he's got it figured out. He's like, look. I'm, I'm, I got breast. I'm on a ship. I'm good to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. 70 years old. Having a good time. I met another dude. Like, some of these guys live their fake cruise life. There was one dude, he's telling me his name's Monday. And he goes, Yeah, Monday, D, M, or D E E. He keeps spelling it Monday. And he's telling me, <laughs> for real. Saying, so goes, Man, you know, we got to stay connected. But the whole time I'm on the ship with this dude, him and his wife are telling me stories. He goes, yeah, well, I've worked for a guy, and it was an aluminum company. He didn't want to pay me for a week's of the pay. And he goes, yeah, I don't know, a couple of weeks later, that man ended up dead. And then he's wow. just telling me like three or four similar stories. One was a road rage thing. He's like, you know, now I'm a nice guy, but I like to know where my enemies are. So I followed the fella. I stayed a few behind, and I seen about forty minute drive. He was in the sticks down there, a couple nights, cars there every night. Hey, fella ain't around no more. Wow. And he's telling me like three of these stories. And he's like, I got to get your phone number. And I want to make sure it works now. <laughs> Dude, wow. He has me call him right there. It rang. But, um, I, I, you know, me, I, I like it's to It's one of those people. guys you just want to stop the conversation at some point. Like, <laughs> so, so you killed these guys, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just let's be clear. Yeah. <laughs> let's clarify before you go any further. Wow. Let's, yeah, let's just, you know. So you did murder somebody, right? Yeah. yeah. Those are those conversations you just say, man, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep. <laughs> That'll happen. Did you try the coffee in the back? <laughs> yeah, right. I think it's wow. different. Jeez. It's a little more rich in the back. Mm. Yeah, you never know what to say to these guys. Yeah. 
I feel like I wouldn't be like, as much as I like kind of freak show stuff like that, I wouldn't even be able to get into I'd be like hi- hiding in a corner somewhere. Oh, there's no way around it. Yeah. You're there. People are finding you. But uh, they are f- I mean, you're on a ship, dude. You ain't going. You ain't hiding too much. You could do what I did. I stayed in my cabin, but it's boring. Like, I like to meet people, but my whole move is in and out. I keep it moving. Uh, if I sit down, it's for a second. I got to always act like I'm on the move. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you get to meet people, too. There's cool people. There's people like such God loving people. There's people that just say, Excuse me, I don't know you, but do you mind if I just pray for you? And then you're there and they're wow. like, Please, dear Lord, help Dominic Leonelli have a great day today. And I'll tell you what, it made me feel great. Wow. You run into that stuff too. Uh, I'd be a little creeped out from that. There's there. positive people that sit down, they'll tell you. I had four husbands before. No, listen, I was, what do you call a a, a skank? What do they call them? Uh, <laughs> they'll be telling you. And the husband was sitting there, yep. Nah, I made an honest woman out of her. Wow. <laughs> Man, some people just like this start in the middle of the conversation. Well, you hear these crazy stories like, there was one couple I sat with. They always got a story. So it turns out the girl was originally going on a date with their other girl's husband and they met and then they switched and they liked each other else more like after six months of going on these double dates then they realized i'm happier with them and she was happier with him both been married 20 years cruising together yep jeez they all go together they all stay together yeah man like a family it's the magic of carnival yeah, it is. Yeah, it really brings people together. It really does. That's what this country needs. Every, All you need is free ice cream. Everybody people just sure. has to go on a carnival cruise together. Yep, ninety nine dollars special. That should be the that would be the new like that should be their new promotion. We got half Democrats, half Republicans. Yeah. Guys, we gotta stay on this carnival cruise together. <laughs> you know it's funny, I feel like the way like it is it is like, you know, you don't wanna bring up the politics of it all, but I feel like somehow, like the way they designed it was smart, because they're coming from certain states. Like I think they know. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. this is gonna be a blue boat. This yeah, is yeah. gonna be a red boat. I don't think there's a lot of blue boats, though, huh? I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're coming from like Minnesota or something. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a whole lot of uh, <laughs> California, New York coming. Yeah. Well, actually, a lot of Cali. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, I don't know. New York's a lot slighter, but dude, there's a lot out of Cali. Well, probably, yeah. I mean, California's a big state. Yeah. Probably some of the South. But now they're starting to come out of New York. They opened up the Alabama port. Man, dude, a Waffle House in Alabama. Oh, wow. Well. Would you ever live in Alabama? I've never been. Dude, the houses are beautiful. Oh, yeah. I always, always heard that, like, uh, people who grow up there like it. I've never I heard any, the accent. I've never heard anybody who had moved there who, you know. Well, you meet these girls. If you're going to find a wife, that's a good spot. These women are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. They run around barefoot. They know how to drive. Yeah, they'll be like, I was wrestling pigs. I caught in a fence. And you'll just laugh. It's like, man, that's so adorable. Right. I mean, I could get into it. I think you move down there. I, you know, I'd probably get into college football. The whole move is if you go to somewhere like that, you know what you got to do. Dan, you got to get rid of the name. You got to go by a cool nickname like Skeet. Or Skittles. Right. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of Asians in Alabama, probably. Well, Outside either, of maybe the school system. Yeah, just get with one of those cool nicknames, though. Yeah. Uh, Donkey. Well, they, they'd see me coming in my Toyota truck. Yeah, they uh, would. I'm not buying a Ford. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you that can't cause, be down there. That no. would cause some controversy. Dude, I got to tell you. Driving a Toyota Tundra? You have to drive a Ford if now, you go to Alabama. I, we're, this system's changing. It's gonna be, be like, it's gonna be like flash dance for it's like No, you gotta get a cowboy hat, some cowboy boots, you gotta go the uh, other way. Lean uh, more into the Mexican. Pulling side. up in a Honda Civic. I'm doing donuts outside. We're drifting. Some tattoos. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go to the Waffle House and order a salad. Oh, dude, can you imagine? Yeah. They see my Toyota truck outside. They really smack it down at that Waffle House, man. Cook all covered in bumps. And they're just like, don't worry about that. No, this is, I got Corazon on it. Uh, and then you're just like, all right. I used to think Waffle House was like, I didn't know that was the name of the place. Yeah. I always thought it was just a type of restaurant. So many of them down south, it's actually ridiculous. I mean, the meal's $4, but it's like, they have them um, four blocks away from each other. Oh, wow. So I get why it's busy, but I, it's not making money. There's way too many of them. 
Ah, still it would be nice to even you go out in this neighborhood. You can't really sit down at a place. No, you gotta oh, go to I jumbos. Love, I would love to sit down at a restaurant like that. You know, get well, some, you got get that some jumbos. Grits. You got jumbos. You Where's get some jumbos. Grits. It's around here somewhere. Oh, there's no, there's no fucking jumbos. Uh huh. I walked by. There's a jumbos Where? out here. What's jumbos? I mean, maybe it's like a twenty minute. It's like a more New Yorkish Waffle House. Yeah, but that's not like Waffle House. You get some grits for four bucks. You get some grits for four dollars at Jumbos. You're lying. <laughs> Look up Jumbos. There is no Jumbos. Or Jumbos. It's one of them. There is no. This is something you made up here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear I walked by one. <clears throat> Jumbos. Maybe I have it confused with the Upper East Side. Jumbo House? Or maybe Jumbos. Jumbo House is a Chinese restaurant. No. Try Jimbo's. Jim, oh, it's Jimbo's, Jimbo's Hamburger. You know what? I was, when I was staying with my ex on the Upper East Side, it was by her house. Jimbo's Hamburger Place on First Ave? Yeah. Still not too bad. Yeah, it's like us. a diner. Well, yeah. I mean, you go there, you get your grits. It'd be a nice little grits, I'm telling you. Now, hold on. Apologies to the people who are listening to this, but I'm looking at the... You got to go in the morning, I'm telling you. No, I'm looking at the menu right now. This no, is not secret menu items. No. Dude, I'm telling These are you. are classic Dominic lies right here. No, dude. I can I hear you sweating trying to make stuff <laughs> up right now. I'm, I'm so just, serious. They you have just don't have a You don't have a creative mind, so you're trying to no, just make up stuff. No, they got eggs. No. I mean, you don't see breakfast. French seven. toast, two eggs, breakfast, 10 bucks. Told right. you. No, that's not a $4 meal from the, the Waffle House. The grits are there, though. What? Yeah. But I mean, you're How not much are the grits? What? Four bucks. I don't even know what I don't even see grits. They're there. They got grits. No. No. My girlfriend used to get the grits all the time. This is not a waffle house, I'll tell you that much. Well, and no, it's I'm not in this neighborhood. This is I have caught you in a web of lies. <laughs> well, first Comment Avenue Comment below. <laughs> first Avenue is still considered the no, L train's getting, not bad. You're getting destroyed in the comments right on now. The L. There is no Jimbo's in or around this neighborhood. 